Last week at CHA, I launched a really cool product called Color Burst. Color Burst is designed for anybody who wants to get a beautiful watercolor background, but might not be familiar with the techniques or might not have the brushes or might not have uh, the skills or know how to do it. This is going to make it really easy. Um, color Burst comes in six beautiful colors, alizarin, crimson, orange, lemon, yellow, phthalo green, ultramarine blue, and violet. These are your basic color wheel colors, your primaries, red, yellow, and blue, and your secondary colors, orange, green, and violet. Um, I'm going to show you a really quick technique right now that'll let you uh, get the basics of using Color Burst. It's as easy as spritz and sprinkle. And then I'll show you a couple of techniques to get beautiful washes. So they're very different techniques, but very simple. And we'll let you get some wonderful watercolor techniques and watercolor pieces that you can use for card backgrounds, um, pieces on scrapbook layouts, even a, a, a scrapbook layout background, um, and for mixed media product project. So there's, it's really a cool product, and I think you're going to like these techniques. Um, I've got in front of me a, a 12 by 12 uh, gummed watercolor pad. You don't have to use uh, this exact paper. I'm also going to show you another technique using uh, Ranger's watercolor paper. But like I told you, it's as easy as spritz and sprinkle. And I'm going to give you um, a really bright palette so you can see in the video how amazing this product is. Um, so I've got my paper and I've got my spritz bottle. A couple of things that you want to have on hand whenever you watercolor is a spritz bottle or a jar of water and paper towels. So I'm going to spritz my paper and you can see I already got some pigment on there so it's, it's going to go ahead and develop a little bit, but I'm going to spritz my paper. This is highly concentrated watercolor pigment and then I'm going to sprinkle color burst right on the surface of the paper and you can see what happens. I'm going to use an analogous color palette right now. Analogous, analogous would mean um, beside each other on the color wheel. So um, red, orange, and now I'm going to put some yellow in that to really brighten it up. So you could leave it like it is. You see how that color just gets on there and it just burst all over the page. It's really fascinating to watch it happen. And you're going to have fun playing with this. Trust me, you will. So now we've got like this really kind of cool effect going that looks like burst and splatters. Um, and it's all around the page and it basically just did it itself. You could uh, dry this with uh, the heat tool. And I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to do that so you can kind of see what that looks like if you just if you chose not to do anything else to it at all. And this will take a minute, so I apologize for that. But whenever you put a heat tool on it, this really like lets you push some of the pigment around on the page. So you can see like that the water is running around on the page because the air is coming out of the heat tool and it lets you like, kind of like blend without using a brush or anything. push some of this pigment around. So even th this simple technique, just spritz and sprinkle and then dry it with a heating tool, will let you have some amazing results. And again, this will take a minute, but nevertheless, it's still, it's going to be worth it because you're seeing like this color burst just develop right on the page in front of you. This is so much fun to do, so much fun to do, like, at CHA, I demonstrated this every day, and I never got tired of it because it just it is so interesting, all the different effects you can get, you model effects, and you can use wax to do wax resist, and there's just a lot you can do, and so it keeps it really interesting um, as you're creating. So you see that um, now that's uh, pretty much dry um, and there are a couple places that are still wet. If you And it's beautiful. 
it's absolutely beautiful the way it is. But if you um, think maybe that you want to change this up a little bit, this is watercolor, so you can go back and you can spritz the areas and that will kind of even out or change the pigment even. So see how that like that orange just really starts to burst out in a whole new way. Uh, you can take your brush then and go back and kind of even up some of that if you want to, just around the edge. I have to do that because a lot of times the water does run down to the edge. And I've got a lot of really concentrated red pigment here. I'm going to just run the brush through that. I'm going to try to bring some of that pigment in a little bit too because that's looking really nice. So like that changed it even more. I'm going to run around here to kind of blend in those speckles. But you wouldn't have to do that because for your project you might like to have the speckles on there. So I'm going to dry this. And you'll see then how even like spritzing it again, brushing a little bit will really give you a completely different look than what you started with the first time. So as you're creating with color burst, and you start getting a composition that's like this, use your artist eyes and kind of go back and look at tiny little pieces because like that little piece right there with that little splatter would be great to stamp on. It would be a great background for a handmade card. Uh, you could take a stencil and modeling paste and, and stencil through with modeling paste and get an amazing result to add texture on top of your watercolor. While you're like this, another thing that's really fun to do is let it drip. So I've got pigment at the top of the page there. I can turn my paper and let that drip around. And so that will give you some really fun areas too. So I'm going to move this aside and then I'm going to show you how to do a simple watercolor wash. And I have a couple of pieces of paper here. This is a Ranger watercolor paper. And a wash is basically just where you um, wash a piece of color, a piece of paper with um, watercolor pigment, and then um, that's your background. I'm going to use monochromatic, so I'm probably going to use an orange. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to miss my paper, and I'm going to sprinkle just the lightest amount of orange on this paper. See, that's just a very little bit of pigment. Really, it was like two shakes. But you see how that already starts to, um, to uh, burst all over the paper. So I'm going to take my brush. And my brush wasn't completely clean because I had dragged it through the, the first example. So I'm just taking that now, just lightly letting that pigment and that water roll down the paper to create that beautiful watercolor wash background. Now, you can just let that dry. And you see, you've, incre you've created a beautiful background that this would be great for um, a card or for a tag. Um, it's beautiful the way you see it. It's also beautiful like this. I have a little bit of pigment on the edges there. And I'm just going to use my kitchen roll or my paper towel to get rid of that. Now look how gorgeous that is. And I'll do one more. My brush still has pigment in it. I don't, really, I don't have a jar of water here. I'll spritz it to get some of the pigment out because I want to show you a, a blue wash next and that'll be very pretty to you. I'll show you just one more wash um, in this little video. It's easy to do. We're going to do just like we did before. I'm going to spritz my paper. And this time I'm going to do a, a blue watercolor wash. Uh, this would be perfect for something that looks like it's a landscape or um, a winterscape. And it's, it's really, it's as easy as spritz and sprinkle. Just, it only takes a couple of grains to get really like some nice pigment on your page. And I'm just going to take my brush, grab some water here, and just wash right down. Creating watercolor washes is one thing that a lot of people think is really uh, difficult, and it really isn't 
just requires a little bit of patience and you just let the uh, you just let the water and the pigment do its work so now we're getting a really nice blended watercolor wash you can see how subtle the gradation of color is and that's exactly what you want to get when you do a wash just real subtle variation of color I'm going to turn this around I'm going to let it kind of roll down the page so you can kind of watch it happen you can see like that pigment just like rolls down the page you're really going to love creating with color bursts there's a lot you can do I'll be uh, adding additional technique videos over the next few days using wax resist, um, salt, um, and who knows? There's, there's a lot to do, so like, I think that you're really gonna like this a lot.